People call me at church sex pastor. People call Aye. me the sex pastor. And, sex pastor. And sex and intimacy. Go there. Go there. <laughs> no, seriously, go there. Listen, because what we see is sex. Sex is literally the act of the man and the woman, the man and the woman, the man and the woman, the, <laughs> man and the, woman, the husband and the wife yeah. coming together to be one. Whereas intimacy is more around your emotional connection. Foreplay is so important because you're actually feeding your, it's a way of getting yourself aroused as well. There's a level of kissing that you can get with your spouse that you don't even need sex. Mm. Listen, I've seen moments where I've had sex with my husband and I'm like, oh my gosh, that energy on the altar. I'm not lying. I am not lying. today on the transform talk show i'm so excited to be back <laughs> with you all honestly wow like we've had some really juicy good. topics and good. today i've got such an amazing guest with me i've got basala who you is with me here today me. oh thank you for having thank me thank you for such being honor, here such an honor. i'm so excited for this so interview I. I, can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait for us to go in <laughs> i know oh my gosh it's gonna be so good but i just want to quickly introduce you to her basala is a prophetic dancer she is a pastor she is also a wife yes, an incredible wife yes. Uh, his, her husband is obsessed with her um she is a mentor a marriage counselor she i don't even know what's not on your list but she's got so many incredible attributes and i was so honored and privileged to be able to have the sex talk with basola today and i'm so grateful for this talk show why this is the sex series. We're talking all things sex. Christian women engaging in this conversation. Why? Because sex has become taboo in the church. Mm. Sex has become something that people don't want to talk about. Sex has become something that no one literally wants to share on. We just want to leave the world to go and talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm here having this series because I truly believe, especially having just gotten married, I'm learning so much. I want to learn more. I'm a student. Good. Good. I'm a student. And so I'm here to be here to learn. Way and soak it up like a sponge. Good, 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 good. Woo -woo. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And it's interesting because when I got married as well, I was a student as well. I knew nothing about sex apart from what you see on TV. Wow. What you hear about, what you read about. And I remember I went into marriage and I thought, I don't know what I'm doing. Literally. Wow. I, I love this transparency. I, <laughs> literally, don't know what I'm doing. And then I just went to God and I just said, God, I need you to show me, teach me. Like, teach me. Did you hear that? Literally. God, teach me. And I'm not going to lie, but the Holy Spirit will literally like inspire me to do certain things. Wow. And just, and just yeah. But you don't hear about that. <laughs> No, no, no. You, Listen, you God actually. God wants to hear about your sex life. God is concerned about your sex life. Ooh. God wants you. Do you understand? When God created, God said <laughs> everything was good. <laughs> Do you understand? Everything <laughs> was good, including sex. Sex. It's from God. Wow, so why not this. enjoy it? Wow. This is this is amazing. We, we haven't even properly dived in yet. I'm, I'm already. Come on. If you're married, maybe you're single and you want to learn about sex. Let's be real. How many of us can honestly say that our parents, especially when you come from African cultures, no sit you down and talk you about the, the birds and the bees? No. Give mm. you the sex talk. They don't, talk, they just no. say, don't have sex. No. That's it. I don't think I had anything. At all. Did anyone anything. give you a sex talk? Did anyone even tell you why sex was good? It's usually the other way. It's usually don't have sex mm. and then you get married and then all, all of a sudden you're meant to know what to do. Wow. And that's why us Christians, we struggle, mm. you mm. know, and our first year of marriage is a total struggle because wow. I don't know my way around. Mm. I don't know my way around the bedroom. Wow. But then what do people do? They go quiet. They don't talk about it. Mm. They keep it within themselves. But actually it's okay. Like, I, I, people call me actually church sex doctor, sex pastor. People call Aye. me the sex pastor. And, sex pastor. And the reason for that was because <laughs> When we got married at my church, we we're probably like the youngest ones who got married. And so I was very inclusive. I was like, you, like, what do I need to do? Mm. I need to please my husband. I need to be happy in my marriage. I don't want my marriage to be like what my parents' marriage is. Mm. And I learned a lot from it, but I just didn't want it to be like that. Because yes. in my head, I just knew that there has to be 
more to marriage. There has to be more to me just being a wife and, you know, playing my duties in the kitchen, whatever. There has to be more to it. There has to be more to intimacy. There has to be more to, you know, holding hands and all of that stuff, which I didn't really see growing up. And so I I went on my journey, which I think that's what you're doing as well. Yes, absolutely. It's a lot of, um, and it's not something that you would, and I'm still learning. I've been married for 12 years now. And Congratulations. I, yes, 12 years, 12 years, 12 years <laughs> in September. But I feel like it's something that you get better. Mm. It's something that go to God about it, go to the Holy Spirit about it. The Holy Spirit will inspire you, but actually sex actually gets better. But you have to be intentional about it. Mm. You can't just fall. You're not going to just find yourself enjoying your sex life. It's something where wow. you have to have that conversation with your husband. It's something where... For example, me and my husband, we've learned that after sex, after we've done the act, we communicate. How did you find it? How did I find it? So good. I like this. I didn't like this. Because that's like everything else. You need to know what's good for you. You need mm-hmm. to know mm-hmm. what pleases me. And the thing about marriage is that marriage is about pleasing one another. Mm. So I'm living my life to please my husband and my husband is living his life to please me. It's the same thing in the bedroom. So you can't be selfish. It's not about my sexual drive and me trying to satisfy myself. No, it's me giving myself. And I think Fesca Rufins talks about it. Mm. You know, me giving myself to my husband and also my husband giving himself to me. And when you have that understanding, you will do the homework as to what pleases my husband. Mm. And then likewise, the husband is also doing his homework as to what pleases my wife. And what does that involve? Communication, talking about it. Mm. But I don't know if people talk about sex. Oh, they don't. <laughs> I don't know if people actually talk. I don't know if couples actually talk about sex. That's so and that sad. is something that is very important. Earlier on, we mentioned about the difference between sex and intimacy. Mm. In my journey, it was where I realized that there's actually a difference between sex and intimacy. Go there. Go there. <laughs> no, seriously, go there. Listen, because what we see is sex. Sex is literally the act of the man and the woman, the man and the woman, the man and the woman, the, <laughs> man and the, woman, the husband and the wife yeah. coming together to be one. Whereas intimacy is more around your emotional connection. You know, it's that connection. It's me holding hands. It's, it's the, you know, you flirting with me. It's all of that, mm. that as a woman we want. And that's why sometimes it feels like women are not interested in sex, but actually we are interested in sex, but our first initial craving is intimacy. I want to feel loved. Talk to me about myself. Talk to me about my body. Talk to me about my hair. Mm. Send me beautiful message me. Send me dirty messages. Hey. That's what we... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, honestly, wow. this is what... This is how you feed your sex life. For women, some women have really high libido and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you know you've got a low libido, feed your intimacy. Mm. Let your husband just feed flourish you and feed you and send you words dirty words pictures wow, there's certain come things on. that I love, I love there's this certain realness. things that I tell people when they're going through my phone you need to be careful now because if you see certain <laughs> if you see certain <laughs> listen I'm not I'm not to be blamed Oh and that's because gosh. that's what myself that's what myself and my husband do. We we flirt. So sex doesn't begin, or wow. even intimacy doesn't begin where we're in close proximity. I'm at work, he's at work, mm. we're flirting with each other. Mm-hmm. And so when we then come together, it's almost like the momentum has already been built. And it's good. For I was the gonna wo- talk to you about that. Yes. So you you need to build that momentum and so that when you come together, it's explosive. It's explosive. But then what tends to happen is that there's no flirting, there's no conversation, everyone is doing their own thing and then they come together and then they come together in the nighttime. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be in the nighttime, by the way. But they come together at night and then let's have sex. You're not gonna enjoy it. Mm. Because sex begins from before the bedroom. Mm-hmm. Sex begins from before I don't know wherever it is, married people want to have sex, kitchen, whatever. But sex actually begins way before then. So intimacy is so important, especially for the women. And I feel like it's important for the husband to also understand that, slow down, Mm. you know, like foreplay. We spoke about foreplay. Mm. Foreplay. Let me actually ask you about that. I want to talk to you about foreplay because a lot of guys don't even know what they foreplay don't. is. They don't. You know, I've had conversations with my husband about foreplay and him actually asking me, what does that yeah. mean for you? What does that look like for you? And what, some people don't even maybe know what foreplay is. I've, I've and had someone say to me, like, honestly, like, I think I was having a conversation around sex and I got a personal message just saying, could you please actually tell, let me know 
what foreplay is. Is it, is it kissing? And at that point, I was just like, oh my God, like people actually do not know what foreplay entails. Wow. And, but it's not written anywhere. Mm. You know, we're Christians, we've been in the church. We're meant to, we're, we're so used to keeping ourselves and guarding ourselves and saying no, 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 no. And all of a sudden, I'm meant to know what foreplay is. Of mm. course, I don't know what foreplay Suddenly is. Suddenly, I'm meant to just be like... I, I'm just meant to be like, I just need to... You know, ready for an, all the, everything. Just know my way in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. And so foreplay, the way I would define foreplay is doing everything you feel to do apart from penetration, mm-hmm. is what I would say foreplay is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so your eyebrows go up. No. So it's literally doing... <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy that you're talking it's, it's about this. It's doing everything and anything to tease each other mm-hmm. apart from penetration. Mm. That's my definition of foreplay. And I would also, I would always say as well is that both of you need to be comfortable as well because there's certain things that I'm not comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Some people will talk about oral sex, for example. Mm. I'm not comfortable with setting things in the bedroom, but that's why you need to communicate with your husband mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Foreplay is so important because you're actually feeding your... Um, you're, it's a way of getting yourself aroused as well. Mm. Do you get what I mean? And can, I would, and, I would say and it's even con- like con- connecting. It's the connecting as well. Yeah. Do you understand? There's a there's a level of, and I'm going to be a little bit explicit here. There's a level of kissing mm. that you can get with your spouse that you don't even need sex. Mm. I don't even experience it. Mm. I know you're married for now. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, I love sex, so I'm like, oh, okay, teach me. Try it. Don't, like, avoid just... uh, Penetration will happen. The whole sex thing will happen. Mm. Just kissing. Just just kissing. Mm. 20 minutes of kissing. Mm. It just takes you to a place of... I don't know what it is. Like, you're just like, oh, my gosh, this is so beautiful, God. Like, this is... There's such a connection. There's such a oneness that happens that you're like, I don't even need to do anything else to me. But that's the amazing thing about foreplay. and, And... it also, I feel like it's also respecting one another as well, saying, I care about you. It's saying, you know, I adore you. It's saying, I admire you. It's saying, I'm attracted to you. Mm-hmm. It's saying, I'm attracted to you. It's saying, you know, I love this body. I suppose to just going in and just bang, 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 bang. Because mm. we foreplay, you're, you're caressing each other. You're exploring each other's body. You know, some people like the light on. Some people don't like the light on. You choose. <laughs> what do you, what do you want think about dim. that? I, I actually wanted to ask you, <laughs> what do you actually think about that? You know, because some people maybe don't want to have the lights on. And I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, is that because of shame? Is that I, because I of fear? They don't want to see each yeah. other. But I, I think know. early on in marriage, even for me, maybe till now, I don't know. I prefer it dim, you know, when the yeah. light is a bit dim. Yeah, but when yeah, it's yeah. really bright, it's just like... It's too much. It's a bit too full on. It's a bit oh, like... Oh, really? So, in it's the a, di- so like, having sex in the daytime okay, is too if much? If it's a daytime, that's fine. Oh, okay. But again, yeah. it's personal. I would rather it just be a little bit... Of, my husband just wants to see the glory. <laughs> and it's in its fullness. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I would rather just a little bit of, you know, just dim the light a little bit, but it's fine. But I think it's a preference <laughs> thing. <laughs> I love it. I hope he's not going to listen to this. I love you. I, oh my! I, think it's a, I feel like it's a thing of because do you know what? Sex is so it's such a vulnerable, beautiful, intimate, but yet vulnerable. It is art. It's like it's literally like two becoming one. It's it's such Amen. a sensitive thing as well. And another thing I was actually I think for us that used to be an issue was. Earlier on, again, in my marriage, and sometimes I do make a mistakes where I would say something random, like, in the middle of sex, like, just something off. Stop, like, and about food or something. I, I don't know, it could just be, and I think it's just my way of, I don't know what it is. Wait, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you, what do you mean? Random, say, like, you're, you want toast or... No, like, okay, let me say, it was supposed to, like, time out. What are you <laughs> think of anything but i feel like it was just me trying to make myself comfortable and just trying to make myself mm. be present oh wow were there times where you actually didn't feel present or you just felt like this is happening rather than this is happening and i'm and here I think the moments where i would say things randomly is because i'm trying to get myself to the place where i'm actually present because remember mm. sex is very different for men and women yes the heart the men are always they're always ready like I can count, I've been married for 12 years now and I can actually maybe say the amount of times when my husband has turned down, turned me down. It's very, very, I can't. Almost like, like almost, never. Almost, do you get what I mean? Mm. And that's because with, with men, they're always ready. It's like, 
they're, they're ready mm. they're, they're, they're ready to go but then with us women th- there's emotions there's our cycle as well so I don't know if you're aware of it as well and that is something that I had to I discovered in marriage as well that I would realize that certain times in my in my cycle Absolutely. my sex drive would be a little bit high yeah. and then other times like I'm just like I don't no. I, I don't, don't touch me <laughs> just that, literally but then I had to realize what was happening to my body and yeah. it was something that myself and my husband had to actually had to talk about to say that this is what is happening mm. and then the moment I realized what was happening I then ha- well, I'm still sometimes I'm still sometimes it's still very hard but then I have to I'm using it to my advantage so when I know that I'm getting to my to this time of the month where it's dry like mm. there's no like it's it's just really dry don't yeah. touch me I have to be more intentional with my husband because I know what's happening mm. but also my husband That's also good. you have to but then also my husband understands that I'm not pushing him away I'm not turning him down but actually this is where I am in my cycle and this is why I might be responding in the way that I'm responding and so in the times where I know that my sex drive is high if people are asking, when is it? When is it? When is it? So it's usually just after your period when you're ovulating because your body is automatically waiting to receive mm-hmm. from your husband mm. to obviously conceive. So in the time where I know that my drive is really high, I would initiate. I would be wild. I would maximize that time and just love on my husband and just be there so that... What does being wild look like for you? Child. <laughs> Allow the Holy Spirit. To <laughs> oh my goodness. The, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of creativity. Uh, come and on. He allows you to be creative. He allows you to explore and, and try and do and and just think outside the box as well. Mm. And I think that's something that is very important. Just think outside the box. Like it doesn't have to be a certain position. It, it doesn't have to be a certain way. Mm. It doesn't have to be, you know just 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 think outside the box and bring your husband by the way you know some people watching right now are like did she just say the holy spirit and sex in the same sentence oh, yes, I did. did she just say that the holy spirit oh yes is, I did. is creative i'm telling you i'm telling you in my first year of marriage i would go to the holy spirit to say god i need help in this area and mm. the holy spirit would literally give me ideas on what wow. to do Wow. To my husband. I love this. And with my husband, the Holy Spirit. So yes, God is interested. God wants to know. God would would rather actually have you go to him than you go to the world. Mm. And then you go and watch pornography or Mm -hmm. go to the wrong um, resource. So God would actually have you. Do you think it's fine for women to, for example, approach married women and get their advice and and ask for help as well? Ladies, that's one of the reasons why I'm having this podcast. Because we... The Transform Network is for women. It's for women. And it's for us Absolutely. to be real, raw, transparent, right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. would you advise that I those would, types of things? Listen, there is um if if there's anyone on here listening that is not enjoying your marriage, your sex life, there's a problem because mm. you should be enjoying your sex life. You should be enjoying it. And so if you're not enjoying it, go find help. Go seek help. Mm. Because you should be. Because otherwise is either you're going to cheat, mm. you're going to settle, mm. or I don't know. But I mean, the the reason for marriage is yes, children. But then also the, the beauty about marriage is that we have the gift, that gift of sex that you can't share with anybody but your yes. spouse. Do you understand? So why not be the best at it? Why not enjoy the fullness of it but sort of i mean what you're saying is profound to so many people listening because we live in a culture right where it's you better know everything about sex before you go and have it so Mm. you better be doing your splits gymnastics and know every single thing and that there's so much pressure in the bedroom especially for married sex as well of you need to know, you need to know. And people don't understand the concept of the fact that a sex life, a good Good. one is actually built. We live in a culture where sex 
uh, is really just disposable. Mm. Okay, I don't like it with that person, so I'm going to go on to the next one. I don't mm. like it with that person, so I'm just going to go to the next one, the next one, the next one, right? And so now when there's commitment involved uh-huh. and it's like you are literally yeah. now going to have sex with the same person for the rest of your life. Now it's not about, I can just dispose of you. Now we need to build something together. And some of us have preserved ourselves before marriage. Adam had to know Eve. There was a level of, we need to get to know each other. We need to build something here. We need to build the pleasure of our sex life. What can can you speak into that in terms of how you and your husband actually built a good sex life? You've spoken about flirting. You've spoken about sometimes. We're still building. Okay, maybe you're not an expert. but, but, But I understand you. Um, Again, just from my experience, I can definitely say that sex does actually get better with time. Mm -hmm. So where we are now, the things that we do now, even like just the the synergy of our bodies, just, you know, just coming together and moving together. That's also come with time and years Mm -hmm. being together as well. Um, And so the, the, the pleasure or the enjoyment that I get of my husband now is nothing compared to what it was like earlier on. Like it's, I'm like... This is amazing. <laughs> but then in wow. the second year of marriage, I was like, this is amazing. Wow, yeah. But it literally just gets better and better and better and better. Um, but what, what about the people who are sitting and watching right now and they're like, my sex life is a, is a mess and they feel really discouraged. Just talk about it. That's good. Just honestly, just talk about it yeah. with your spouse. Talk about it with your spouse. Because it could be even your spouse is actually enjoying it. Mm. But then you're the one is like... Not enjoying Ugh. it. Yeah. Okay. So just to make sure that, okay, babe, where are you in our sex life? I, you're having a great time. Do I satisfy you? There's nothing wrong with you asking your husband. That's like, good. do I satisfy you? No. What can I do? What would you essentially say, okay, to a woman who is watching this today mm. and they're married... Right, they've got a marriage and they feel as though, I don't know, um, sex is almost like a place of... It's a chore. Not not even just that, like, they are in a place where they actually just feel as though their husband is unreasonable for, like, Mm. wanting sex. So let let me paint this a bit more. For example... There's someone watching this and they may be like, my husband wants sex once a day. He's so selfish. That's too much. Things like that. <laughs> like I'm I'm just putting out the wildest scenarios because, you know, even for example, um, you know, having sex once a day, things like that. Um, I don't know if people do that. Some people do, some people don't, yeah. you know. But for me, especially in my marriage, sex is important Definitely. and sex is also a priority. Yeah. And I wanted to talk to you about that. Is sex a priority? Should it be a priority? Because there's some there's some prayer warriors who are who are, are, are they're watching through the screen oh, they're and they're like, like oh my gosh I've been watching this <laughs> this funny video uh, on, on YouTube of this woman I'm, I I must go to the nations yeah. like she was like, I must pray 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 you know because what what do you think about because in truth right when um my husband and I are fasting for example when we take time to fast we don't necessarily come, come together, together in that yeah, way so yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. so what do you think like what gosh there's so many questions i'm asking <laughs> you three questions in one my first question is is sex a priority the second question i'm asking is where does does so sometimes your spirituality and that physical that physical connection of I coming agree. together yeah. Some people would see that as a clash forever. It's yeah. like, no, you're too carnal. You're too carnal. You yeah. want sex every yeah. day. You're too carnal. What? But, yeah. Okay. So to the to, to the first part of your, your question, um, for, is sex a priority? I, I don't. I don't really like the word priority because mm-hmm. I feel like sex should be like a way. It should be your norm. It should be the the way of a life. way of life. It should be a part and parcel of your marriage. And I'm not saying that I'm there, you know, again, as I said, I'm also um, getting better and, and, you know, just working on our sex life as well. But I feel like, so again, going back to my, ex- my, my experience, sex is such that there'll be times with myself and my husband where there's just tension in the house. Mm. Like there's just tension. You're irritating me. I'm irritating you. We don't know what it is. We can't really pin it down to what the problem is. Or sometimes it could be an argument. But we realize that 
oh, it's because we haven't had sex in a while. Mm. And so there's something about sex that I think is Miles Monroe. He talks about it's like the oil of the marriage. It, it brings, it keeps the marriage together. Do you understand? Because what you don't want to do is then just be a housemate with your husband. If you're not having sex with your spouse, then you guys are just housemates. Mm -hmm. You're just friends. And so sex has a way of bringing the both of you together. So if you want to use the word a priority to help you make sure you have sex, then you have to prioritize sex. Well, I think it's something that I read that a healthy, to ha a healthy um, sex lab, you need to be having sex about three Three to four times, three to four a times week. a week. Mm -hmm. I think it's about three to four times a week. And so to your question, I would definitely say to prioritize sex, if you want to use the word priority, but just make it a norm. Just make it a part but of that, what you I, do. What you're saying, I think <clears throat> it is, is really nice. It's like, I think, it's, I it's think like it when sounds you nice. You need to eat every day. It's like you need food but every people, day. But people don't see it that way. And let me tell you why people don't see it that way. People don't see it that way because a lot of people have never had sex. A lot of people have been abstinent, you know, for a long period of time. Yeah. You know what but I mean? But this is in marriage though. So when they now get married, right? As a woman, when you've been abstinent for a long time, mm -hmm. right? Or you have never had sex, right? When I speak about sex being a priority, right? There's some women who, for example, they're good with just having sex once a month. Mm. They're good with just having sex but then is your husband good? Is your hus is your husband happy? Yeah, that, that's and and that's what it is. So when and sex, it, it can't be a selfish thing. It can't yeah. be about you. Remember, sex is what I give to my husband. Mm -hmm. Sex is what my husband gives to me as well. And when I'm talking, when when we say a healthy sex life, it's not just you. It's us. Mm -hmm. Do we have a healthy sex life? And I, going back to what I said earlier on, you could feel like we're good. I'm good with once a month. But then your husband is struggling mm -mm. or is doing other things. And, and, and that's what happens as well. If it's a thing where your husband ha does have a high sex drive, you know, he will go to other things or he will actually shut down as well. Oh, God because forbid. Is but then, yeah. Listen, I've seen moments where I've had sex with my husband and I'm like, oh my gosh, that energy on the altar. <laughs> I'm not lying. So I, I actually saw a video. It was so funny. Um, but then it wasn't funny at the same time because basically there was a lady who was obsessed with praying for the nations and her understanding of sex was so carnal. Um, it was very much like, if we're having sex, this is not God's will for me. I need to be praying for the nations. I need to be praying for the nations. Is she married? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was like a skit, like oh, a yeah. little, oh, you know, I you know. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, you are you so, but like, I was reading no. the comments, and this is why I'm really like, I know you're giving me um, loads of inc incredible tips, but I'm kind of like to playing a role where yeah. I'm kind of like, but what if? But yeah. what about which, this? And which is but good. what about this? And I'm asking that because they're actually, oh, I've read through those comments, yeah. and I was like. <clears throat> There are real people out there who no. are just like, okay, no, like you are competing with my spiritual life. No, but even doesn't the Bible say, I think it's first Corinthians where it says not to abstain. Yes. And that the only time to abstain, there has to be an agreement between the both of you. And that should be in prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. But there has to be an agreement. So if the husband is saying, I'm okay having sex whilst I'm praying, there's nothing wrong with that because there has to be an agreement. Mm. So to those people who feel like, you know, you, because you're, doing a 21 day fast mm -hmm. a 14 day day fast you can't have sex mm -mm -mm. actually Paul actually advises that so that the enemy doesn't come in mm -hmm. do you get what I mean and so good. I don't know how to explain it but the moment and even scriptures talks about you know there's something about when you've had sex it just opens you up to to this world to this world that the safety of it has to be in marriage. Mm. Do you understand? But then when you're not feeding that need, you could open yourself up to something else. Mm -hmm. So this is for people in marriage where they're not having sex. Mm -hmm. If you're not having sex, I bet you someone, it could be the husband, it could be the wife, they are actually, they've actually, you've actually allowed them to be open to something else. Has, it could be a masturbation. Has there ever been a time in your own life, <clears throat> in your own marriage where you have faced a temptation like that before? Um, so my temptation would be to, so not necessarily, you know, going out of my marriage, but just being less of, of a wife. Wow. So that we're abstaining now. So I'm not, I know 
when I do this, it makes you happy. Or when I do this, you know, you feel like I'm serving you, but I'm going to hold that back from you. Wow. Do you get what I mean? So it's not necessarily, that I'm, it's not necessarily that I'm going to go out and have sex with you, but I might disrespect you. Wow. I might not honor you in the way that I know I should be honoring you. Only because wow. there's an underlining issue there because, you know. It's deep. And it's and for some people it's that they go out and they they find someone else and have sex. And some people they go into pornography. Some people they, they masturbate. Do you understand? And that's why I just strongly believe that in marriage you need to guard your sex life because the enemy would use anything. The enemy can use anything. Or oh my gosh, I just remembered another mm-hmm. one. It could be someone at work. I remember, and this wasn't even that we were not. Uh, because myself and my husband were very intentional about our sex life, so we try and make sure that, you know, if we can't do three a week at least we do one a week mm, do you understand mm, but mm. there has to be some sort of some level of intimacy and i remember i don't know what it is it might have been like a busy week or whatever and for some reason there was this guy at my workplace that just caught my attention mm. but then only because he reminded me of my husband <laughs> I'm wow you, only because he reminded me his personality just yes. the way and very quickly, I had to just cut it off. I literally, I had to just be like, no, nah, I know what's happening here. Wow. I'm not going to go into that. And it's things like that that the enemy could use where, you know, all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, there's this guy or there's this person. Or mm. this, this. And that's why, again, just going back, just protect, like, honestly, sex is from God. It's mm. a gift from God. Feed your sex life. Talk about it with your spouse. If you're uncomfortable, seek help, get counsel, get your pastor, get someone that you're, you know, comfortable with and talk about it. If you're not happy, if you haven't got an amazing, you, you feel like you're not content, ask people, do you climax as well? Some people don't climax as well. Mm. And I feel like that is something that we need to talk about. And also there's different yeah. ways to climax as well. Because yeah. some people are like, oh my gosh, I'm not enjoying sex. I don't climax. Okay, there are different ways. ways. It's not always by penetration, people climax, mm-hmm. there's other things. And and you wouldn't get that information if you don't put yourself out there to actually Absolutely. ask the right people. So I would just say, just ask the right people and don't suffer, do you understand, in your home. Don't suffer by yourself wow. because there's help so out there. Good. And there's a thing as enjoying your sex life. Like there's a thing as both of you and your husband enjoying your sex life and just embracing the fullness of God, not just in ministry, not just in, in marital, not just in business, but also in your sex life. Amen. It's a thing. And I, I'm oh not God. there. Listen, I'm not there, but then I've seen it. And me and my husband, we talk about it all the time. Mm. We talk about it all the time. And we know that there's definitely more to this. Another analogy I like to use is Christ and the church. Yes. We know what Jesus was like with the church. We know what Jesus was like with the bride. Beautiful union, beautiful intimacy. Do you understand? Yeah. And that's what God wants us to be like with our spouse as mm. well. In its fullness. So why not? Wow. This was this was <laughs> so why not? this was awesome. This yes. was absolutely no, this was absolutely awesome. I love the fact that you're constantly as you said, like 12 years in, but you're still a student. I'm still a student. Like, I'm here. Yes, I'm a ba- baby girl here. Two, a two months into marriage. And, um, and I'm well, learning. What, was, what we tend to say, me and my husband, for people who are married in their first year, you, you should be having sex like seven days a week. <laughs> like, because you're discovering each other. You yeah. know, you're getting to know each other. You're getting to know what you like, what I don't like. You're feeding your intimacy. You're learning. Absolutely. And, and yeah, so you should be, you know, Absolutely. putting in the work. <laughs> I think also the work has been in communication. That's really important, you know. Um, you can be having, like, sex, like, I don't know, like, seven times a week, five times a week, you're and you're not enjoying yeah, it. Absolutely. You know, so what you were just talking about is really, really good. And actually, I want to read I want to read a oh, yeah, scripture. There was something you wanted to read. There's a few <laughs> things I want to read, okay, for those who don't believe in foreplay, okay? <laughs> Let's let's really get into that. This is from the Bible. What part? What part in the Bible? The Let Bible. <laughs> okay, Songs of Solomon. Yes. Ver- chapter chapter seven from verse one to five. Are you ready? How graceful are your feet in sandals, O queenly maiden? Your rounded thighs are like jewels, the work of a master hand. Your navel is a rounded bowl. <laughs> And never lacks mixed wine. Your belly. Listen, what I'm trying to say to you, 
There's some foreplay going on. There's some making their way Absolutely. around a woman's body See? that is in the word it's of the God. Bible. Verse three says, your two breasts are like two fawns, <laughs> twins of a gazelle. I don't even fully know what that means. <laughs> but what I do know is it's that if you read, if you read through similar. that, yeah. This husband is literally exploring the body of his wife yeah. and God saw it fit to put a whole book in the Bible dedicated to just sex. Yeah. Oops, yeah. I just I just hit the oh, mic because yeah, I got I got passionate. <laughs> but a whole chapter Absolutely. dedicated to making yeah. love, having sex, meaning and that God, and right? and touching and grabbing. There's and there's passion <laughs> in the bible and god's trying to so listen your sex life should it's, be a passionate one pain. you it shouldn't be you just despi- yeah. no, no, no 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 so and there's another part in the bible as well i think it's in the book of proverbs where it says your the wife her breast should satisfy, satisfy you or satisfy <laughs> Oh my god, listen, the Bible. Oh my gosh, I this love is, you. This is the Bible. This is the Bible. <laughs> but it says a lot. Yeah. It says a lot. Our sex life should be one that is fire. Yeah. It's fiery. God wants it. God desires it for us. Wow. So love husbands, grab Come her on. breasts. Come on. You know, for the we ladies, women, the wives, you know, grab whatever it is you need to grab. <laughs> it's it's okay. It's okay. But even talking about grabbing as well, I want to nail that point around intimacy. Because mm. if you can get your intimacy right, the sex will be perfect. Yes. If you can get the flirting right, the sex will be perfect. Mm. Do you understand? Like groping outside, you know, a little bit of kissing here and there, a little bit of touching. Sometimes I love this some things my husband does in public, I'm like, there are people here. Oh yeah, and he'll be like, "I know." <laughs> I will like, and I'll just go the other direction. Oh just wow! To pretend like no one saw that. I love but you guys. But it does something to me. Like, it's like oh, do you get know what I mean? It actually yeah. does something to me. Like, I'm thinking about him. There's no way that when we're having sex, I'm not going to be like, "Oh my gosh, you're my world," mm. because of how you've made me feel, feel throughout the day. Yeah, just a, like even that intimate stroke. Do you know what I mean? Just like a little, <laughs> just a know, little, yeah. just a little. Oh, okay. And then when he's not doing it, and that's another thing as well. And then when he's not doing it, you're like, "What's going on? What's going on? Why? <laughs> why are you not doing <laughs> yeah, that?" Exactly. But honestly, it's 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 godly. It's of Amen. God. It's to the glory of God. So wow. yes, enjoy, enjoy your sex life. This enjoy is a great conversation. Marriage. Thank you so much for Salah. Nah, Thank you. This, this is the closing of our episode. We are so grateful for you. I guess my, um, yeah, my desire is for you to pray for the newly newlyweds watching newlyweds. and maybe the, some of the singles okay. get a little prayer. So, in. For the newlyweds, um, just a quick advice. It will get better. Sex does get better. Just keep doing it. And I guess if, if there be anyone, because I know that some people go through the traumas, mm. um, some people go through, they just have a very negative um, view, understanding of sex. It might be experience, it might be off their parents. And I just pray that God will just bring healing to you. I pray that God will bring deliverance to you. But then also the, the conviction that I have regarding sex that causes me to just, you know, just just be passionate around it and just pursue the fullness of what God, you know, has created, you know, within the confinement of marriage. I actually pray that over you as well, that the Holy Spirit would help you see sex differently, see sex the way that God, you know, the way that God sees it between a husband and a wife and that the Holy Spirit would also help you as well. Mm. I pray that you would see fit to actually go to the Holy Spirit to ask for help as the Holy Spirit also helped me. And I also pray that you would enjoy your sex life. Come you would on. enjoy your Amen. marriage. You know, it would be a testimony when people are testifying Amen. over this and that. Your, yours would be that Amen. I'm having a good sex Amen. life with my husband. And that and you would also pass it on to generation after generation because it's God's will. It's God's will for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I love you. Amen. This is amazing. It's been good. Thank you so much. Thank oh you for my having gosh. Me. Thank you. Thank you so much.